You shouldn't sign it. Postponing's almost always the smart thing to do. Temper's cool, memories fade. They rule on me, it's done, right? Yeah, but... Then let's get it over with. Have you ever done a peer review before? No. Good. Here's a misnomer. These are your bosses. This could cost you some money, some privileges, or it could cost you your career. All I can tell them is what happened. There's an objective reality to what happened, and that committee is never going to know it. All they're going to know is what they picture happened, which depends a little on what you tell them and a whole lot on how you tell them. May 11th. Patient presented to the clinic. What's her name? It's in the file. Do you know it? Then use it. Kayla presented to the clinic with multiple joint and stomach pain. Dr. Foreman was called in for a neurological consult. What's the point of this, man? Checking your sister's cerebral coordination. The thing is in her leg and her stomach. Waiting in the clinic for six hours so she can play patty cake. Could have gone to the ER last night. Oh, yeah. You gonna come over and babysit her kids? OK, patient comes from a family of jerks. I get it. Can you stick to the medicine? Something wrong? There was some uveitis. Meaning? Her iris, the color part of her eye, was inflamed. Meaning? Worst case, blindness. But there was an upside. It was weird enough to get house interested. Young woman, joint pain. Gonorrhea is a possibility. It's polyarticular. Maybe rheumatoid. That's typically small joints. This hit her knee. Takayezu's arteritis. Get a sed rate in serologies. Childproof. How many kids are hopped up on Vicodin? Give me. Right. I gotta ever get it back. Chase. Don't care about the Vicodin. Might not just be her arteries, could be all her blood vessels. Vasculitis with stomach pain, so bichettes. No, she'd have oral sores. Or genital. Go find them. I thought she was Foreman's patient. Why did you do the exam? She'd have oral sores. Or genital. Go find them. Whoa, whoa, Foreman. Chase can handle the pelvic. Any pain? Is it bad? This will go a lot easier if you talk to me. I'm sorry. I, um, I just really hate hospitals. When I was 12, had my tonsils out, got to skip school, lots of ice cream, made me want to be a doctor. My mom died when I was eight, so I spent months at Princeton General. She died in the TTs, your mom? Bottles stashed around the house, mood swings, that whole deal? You've been there? My mom. Dad left, mom crawled inside a bottle. Made for a great year 12 of high school. You OK with your dad now? No. Does your dad have anything to do with this story? No, it's just. OK, I get it. The two of you bonded, which is probably why you haven't been sued. Patients never sue doctors they like. But keep it brief, OK? The panel doesn't like to think they're being manipulated when they're being manipulated. She had some ulceration. Confirming Bichette's. I gave her some prednisone, an antacid, and I ran a pathogen test on her arm. Takes 24 hours to confirm. Told her any doctor could check it out. You didn't make an appointment? Nope. She just showed up. You wrote her a prescription, which means there was an examination. What really happened? I was on the phone. Dr. Chase? Hi. Hi. Kayla, I'm here for the test. My arm. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, OK. It's positive. Talk to Nurse Previn, get an appointment with Dr. Broston in rheumatology. I took that medicine you gave me, but my stomach still hurts. Sheds could be stronger than we thought, or it could be reflux from the prednisone. It's a stronger antacid. Doctor. Yes. Nothing. You didn't ask her anything about the stomach pain? I made one little mistake. Those little mistakes go, that was a biggie. I'm in the stomach. There's too much blood, I can't see. Is she burst an artery? 
No. There. Bubbling. Just a bad ulcer. Okay. Cauterizing. Looks good. Bleeding ulcer. We got it. She was fine two hours ago. If by fine, you mean she had fountains of blood spurting out of every orifice, then yeah, I believe you. I'm guessing those are celebratory bells. Sound like BP-70. Show me the ulcer. It's brown. I cauterized it. Sweet pack. Show me the whole stomach. Stop. Second ulcer? Not anymore. It perforated. Get it to an OR! Let's go. She was not fine two hours ago. She mentioned stomach pain? Yeah, so I gave her a stronger... You didn't do an exam. She just came in for a follow-up. The results of the pathogen test. Did you listen to her stomach? Check her vitals? Maybe if she'd said something about taking ibuprofen, mentioned the rectal bleeding? Yeah! Why didn't she go to med school like you did? Diarrhea, blood in the stool, these are routine questions. The doctors skip all the time. It was a minor mistake. I couldn't have known Mistakes it was Mistakes are as serious as the results they cause. This woman could die because you were too lazy to ask one simple question. No, she might die because I had the bad luck to spill your damn Vicodin pills. I responded with a number of trenchant remarks which made Chase cry, none of which I'm gonna testify about. Unless you convince Chase to roll on me. Excuse me? Testify about what? Uh, Chuck. I get a break from the parable of the wicked doctor and tell a little story about a patient. Let's call him Buck, who has low O2 sats and crackling lung sounds. Like I have. Buck has idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. His lung tissue's turning to rock. There's no known cause, no treatment. He is slowly suffocating. You're talking about me? One transplant's about a half million dollars, but this poor sucker's got no insurance. If he tried to sign up now, he'd be excluded from pre-existing condition. But let me confirm with my lawyer. She confirms. If only Buck hadn't been diagnosed with fibrosis before he got insurance. So, back to the exam. That's how you tell this guy he's dying? Oh, relax. He's got a cold. And soon, health insurance. Such a hero, always righting wrongs. Who cares who you have to manipulate? I'm sorry. I didn't realize you and Buck were so close. Diarrhea, blood in the stool. Two simple questions you could ask her six months ago and averted this whole thing. You didn't ask either. Why? Judging from your question and your demeanor, I assume you were visiting with House. I've been over this. I don't know. Good doctors don't make mistakes. Good doctors like that. never forget to ask questions. And you've got your answer. Apparently, I'm not a good doctor. FYI, self pity generally is not a good strategy in these hearings. What happened after the operation? The kidney damage isn't so bad. The liver damage is more worrisome. There's no dialysis for livers. I know, but if she loses a liver, she can get a transplant, right? We can put her on a list. I could do it. I could give her part of my liver. Surgeons won't operate unless the donors had a long time to weigh the decision. There's black markets. Uh, for organs, that's just... Oh, oh my stomach. Pain constant? Oh, yeah. Sharp or dark? Oh, I don't know. It's uh, A little cold. She's got ascites. No, it's a clot. Nurse, call the OR. We got a pepper for nimbalectomy. Oh, oh. Uh. CBC, PT, and a liver panel. Forget it. We can't give a liver to a woman this sick. Do you listen to what you're saying? There is no point in giving a new liver to somebody who also has vasculitis. Treatable. And kidney damage. It's healing. You know what's really killing her? Chase forgot to ask a standard question about stomach pain, so he missed the diagnosis. So she perforated, so she got sepsis, so her BP tanked, so she got blood clots, so she lost her liver. Livers are important, Cuddy. Can't live without them, hence the name. And here's the big issue. Chase is a hospital employee, and Kayla is a sympathetic mother of those two jury-friendly moppets, Caleb and Cody. Dory and Nikki. Your point, beyond just trying to make Chase wet himself, seems to be that the hospital faces liability here. Well, thanks for clearing that up. I still need a medical reason to list her. That is a medical reason. The family wins this hospital in a lawsuit. They'll turn it into condos. People will die waiting outside a condo for medical care. I'm 
start praying for a 12-car pileup on the turnpike, because we're not exactly swimming in livers over here. 